try until my mic works. There we go. <laughs> oh, seriously. I really need to probably just get a new microphone. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to another live stream on Floromancer Garden of Glass. Of course I would look at you right away. Because why not? Oh, seriously. Well, morning. <laughs> I hope everyone had a decent Christmas and are relaxing, enjoying the holidays. Um, we had a decent day yesterday. It was pretty nice. Um, one friend came over and shared dinner and board games. So, yep, it was our holiday. Um, I've done a little bit of work here in my Floromancer world and I wanted to show it to you. I'm hanging out over here because the work has been done over to my left over there. Um, how far behind are you? A month. They're a month behind. This is my fourth week. Uh, streaming weekends and I think we're just now getting into the second no we just had season, episode 8 which was still the first weekend of streaming so you're behind quite a bit <laughs> um, anyway my decision um, if you watched the last stream was to try to decide if I was going to do building using survival materials or if I was going to do like I did for the levitated uh, playthrough and do any non-progression building in creative and I decided that's what I would enjoy doing um, it doesn't feel as grindy then I don't have to constantly hope that I have 10,000 of a certain resource before I can start building um, and because I only get a chance to play Minecraft a lot less than I used to I wanted to be able to go right away. So the rules that I set up for Levitated still apply here. I have to be able to at least make them in survival. Okay, so whatever materials I use, they, I should be able to make them in my current progression in survival. It just means I'm removing the grinding them out. So for example, if I wanted living wood, I can use living wood in my builds because I could stand here get my trees and grind out the wood and make living wood. So that's an available building block for me. So that's what I'm describing here is anything that I currently can make and just don't want to grind out to build with. The other rule is if I use any tools, they need to be made in, cre in survival first for me to be able to use them in creative. So if I want to make use a builder's wand, I need to make it in survival so that I can use it in creative. All right. And then in creative, I'm also flying around. So with that in mind, I'd like to show you the uh, progress I have made. As you can tell, I have done some relocating of some chests and things that were here. Slowly, this place will become no, not, no longer populated. But uh, yeah, are you ready for this? I'm gonna stay looking down here. Um, yes, hello sheep. You ready? Um, warning, it is not complete. <laughs> and I'll explain why once I show it to you. But this is going to be our new base area. Woo! <laughs> um, so yeah, I wanted something cool and magical and gardeny. This is the start. Um, we're gonna switch over to creative so I can fly around. So this is what we have in the middle. I will show you more detail in a bit. Um, the reason that this is dirt is because the blocks that I want to put up here, I cannot currently make. Um, I would like to do, I want to mix in some of this slate, which I can make, 
with some of these terracotta shingles, which I currently cannot make. So these are the colors that I want. I want the slate and the shingles in the blue color. Maybe some of the regular terracotta, which I currently cannot make. So once I can make them, I'll be able to do the uh, roof and connect it the way I want and everything. Um, there's no windows simply because I haven't decided if I'm making any shapes in here, if it's going to be all windows or what. Um, but it'll be mana glass when I get to that, which I can make. So let's take a look at these pillars. These pillars are made with a lot of living rock, as you can see. Andesite walls, which we can get andesite from our um, orchid petrum. So I had andesite available. It's also craftable. If you remember, vanilla adds a craftable recipe for andesite. Um, and then these are from Block Crafty. They're just the framed fences. So you can tr make any block, a Block Crafty block. And in here are gray petal blocks. Um, so that's what's in there. And then I have everywhere that there's just a single andesite wall around it, there's mana glass in the middle. So the whole pillar will glow. And that's really, it's just an alternating pattern. Um, this section here turns. So this way it looks like this. And then if you rotate it at 90 degrees, it's this way up here. So I just rotated it a couple of times to give it some interest. And there are six, eight pillars. The middle still has our mana pool battery. And I made these all slabs. Whoops, I forgot I was in creative. I made these all slabs so that if I wanted to, I could add more pools. Oh, so there's that. There's the mana pool that we're going to be sending mana out into the world with. Remember, we're having input underneath and output here. All right. And then each of the cardinal corners, I made a little bit of a more of a supportive arch here and joined it to the top and made a repeating pattern going up this way. And then, yep, this is just going to be a fancy uh, fancy uh, dome once I can make the blocks. Yes, this is 112. Alright, so that is what I worked on over the week built off the platforms, made another giant circle. You know me in circles. Circles in Minecraft are just something I enjoy. So the these two are flat pathways. These two go up and I'm not sure yet if I'm going to go flat here or if I'm going to go up again and give it a little bit more shape. I don't know yet. And I've also written out like the things I want to go this way. A few of the things I'd like the Petal Crafting Hall, the Jaded Amaranthus, Living Wood and Living Rock Generation to be this way. All right, and then over here, I'm going to do the orchids. So we've got the regular orchid for ores, the Petrum, the Tarum, and the Marimorphosis, and then also the Cobble Gen and Stone Stone uh, Cobble Works and Stone Gen will be this direction. I don't know what I'm putting in here yet. I'm pretty sure it will be not open like this. I'm, it's probably going to be more grass. And if you'll notice that this circle is higher because I'm gonna have it kind of stare up to that or wall or something. I wanted it to be a different height. So it's now just a couple blocks up. All right, so that is what I have built. That's all the building I've done. But that's still, that took me a long while to get those figured out. So. Um, well, this is not... I think you're confused, 1935. There are lots and lots of 1.12 mod packs. This mod pack does not have any of that stuff in it that you're talking about. I have no idea what mods you're using that you're asking these questions. There are hundreds of 1.12 mod packs.
The name of the mod pack is called Perfectly Complex. On Technics. Okay, let me start you off there. I don't use Technic. I have no idea what packs are on Technic. I've heard a lot of bad things about Technic, so I don't use Technic. Two, I'm not going to be able to help you because I am not playing a pack with any of those mods in it. So you need to go investigate that from somewhere else. I'm not going to be able to help you. Okay, so today I wanted to start figuring out, I can't remember how I initially automated the runic altar in my previous playthrough. I do know it's a riskable build, so I could go on YouTube and watch his tutorial again. I have not done so. Um, so yeah, I would like to get some runes made. And again, I moved all my resources over there. So we'll have to go back and forth a couple of times until I get things situated over here where I want them. But first, I want to get some more mana going. And I made a couple of hydrangeas, but we need to make a few more. Um, yeah. So what do we have in here? Oh, hang on, I'm in creative. There we go. Um, I can never remember if it's blue and cyan <laughs> or blue and light blue. Cyan. All right, and we need 32 of you. So let's get this set up. And I should have, oh, I don't. Dang it. I thought I had the sand in there. Do I happen to have some over here? Guess not. We'll have to go get it. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. It's in this one. Okay. We haven't been in here. This is going to be my storage right here, and I might have a second floor because this is big enough to have two floors. But the storage and like workshop will be here, and I thought it was cool because we'd be able to look out and see our stuff progress as we build it. And ultimately, there won't be a ladder here. Uh, I would like to use luminizers when we can make them, but we've got a ways to go before I can do that. Okay. Do 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 do. Um. So. making sure this works yep okay the once we have some mana generation going um, I'd like to get going on sparks and augments so that we can get mana going from our hydrangeas into the battery and so we need to make some sparks and that likely means I'm gonna either need to go to the nether and kill blazes or which is the, this will be the better option um, spawn in a blaze using a fell pumpkin and punch it to death because I only need powder I don't need the blaze rods for that um, and it just seems like a 
smarter deal. <laughs> I don't have a whole lot of blaze powder here. I have 16. It's enough for our initial start for things, but yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> um, so, God, I hate these Endermen bouncing in here. The, um... We need iron bars. I think I might already have some iron bars and a fell pumpkin, which um, do they string or spider eye? String. I mean, let's see if I have any over here. Otherwise, we'll just do the uh, sheep thing. When there used to be spider farms over there. All right. Pumpkin. Let's go get some iron bars and we need to make up the, uh, okay. We need to make up the little holding chamber for it so that we don't catch everything on fire here. I do not remember if I have fire tick on or not. And that's not something I want to test at the moment. There we go. All right. Do I have any slabs? I have living rock ones in there. We should make some slabs. Okay. There we go. Hey, Comet Lore. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you as well. I hope you had a good time. <laughs> Where did I put this? We'll put it over here. Um, I should be okay with that, shouldn't I? He won't be able to see me from there. And then I just need to be able to get up there. And I remember I used a trap door before. Hmm. Trap door again. All right. One, two, three, so it goes here. Great. Oh. And then the only way to get all of the blaze powder, the lots of blaze powder, is to punch him. Twenty-six. Yay. Alright, so we need petals. We'll grab some over here. Are you full or something? Ah, oh, I need to upgrade these. They're, some of them are full, so that's not helpful. Okay, let's... we need to take care of that pretty quickly. Um, let's go see what we have for upgrade stuff. 
We might only be able to do iron. Let's grab some of you in case I need it. So we need to make four upgrades. I think I have one upgrade template. Okay, let's see here. Need to do that and that. Probably need all of this. That's that, right? Yep. And we need to do this twice because you get two per. Alright. And then more than that for sticks. Alright. And then See, I don't have obsidian, and I don't have a pick that can break obsidian just yet, so we'll do these. There's one. Two, three, two, four. Okay. I should shut this off since it's done. And we should bring those with us to refill. There we go. Now it should be filling up more. Woo! Crisis averted. Um, thirty. Thirty six. drop all of them and then it'll place because I don't have a timer running Yay! so we're at a pretty decent number for the amount of pools we filled up four pools so far from Hydro Angels so that's kind of cool But our, what we're working towards today is to get this mana pool sent to there, and then that sent all the way to there. So we've got a little bit of work to do, but that's the direction it's going. And I believe this is enough so that if I just put a dominant spark on that one, it should pull. And then we just have to put up a mana spreader. Um, Pulling out of that one. Hmm. Just need to make sure that it's far enough away from the others, I guess. I need gold nuggets. And now we 
should be able to make sparks. Okay, we've got four, and now we're gonna need to make at least one of these and one of these. Mm -hmm. We might need to make a spark tinker or two. We'll see here. We'll get the, um, the augments made. Um, you put you over here, over there. All right, so we need a rune of earth and a rune of water. No, a rune of fire. Start with that, and we're going to need mana pearls. Do that. So let's grab. Well, we've got some iron. And we've got some mana powder. So for the rune of earth, I don't think I have, yep, I have a rune of earth, good. So I just need to make a rune of fire. Another brick, nether wart, and gunpowder, which we have over there. Living rock we have over there. Um, mana pearls we have over there. I think we have enough um, iron to turn into mana steel, so yeah, like I said, until I get everything moved over here, it's going to be a lot of back and forth. At least it's not super far, right? And I have mana here. Let's grab couple of living rock and we're gonna get this going all right I didn't grab the stuff for the earth because I have it yes first let's do that and then There we go, rune of fire. Okay, and then we need to do mana pearls. Send them through the portal. There we go. Great, so dominant, recessive. And that's a start of our spark fun. Now getting down there and, you know, building walking paths while we set that up will be loads of fun. Um, what I did to get them there was I used a water column, a water stream, um, to place uh, blocks down and then I just mined them all up. <laughs> that was fun. Um, where did I put all my cobble? There it is. And then my water rod. There. Fifteen ladders. Is that enough? I'm trying to remember-ish. 
shouldn't be more than like 12 ish. down there because that's the max distance of mana pools with sparks can reach but we'll just make a couple more all right this is where we may fall out of the world <laughs> this has the potential for that to happen um while we're down here we probably should i only have one living rock on me we should make a couple more mana pools. And I have to decide if I want spark tinkerers or not. Um, what did I need for a spark tinker? I need four mana steel. Let's make one just in case I think I need it. Okay. I don't have the redstone on me. Stefan, thank you so much. Merry Christmas to you as well. All right, let's attempt this. Oh, water. And then I pretty much rode down it and placed it on the bottom. I should be able to still do that, yes. Hello. This is always precarious, always. Whoop. That's where I wanted to be. So then we're going to get rid of the water. Oh, before you drown, Henry. So there's the pool that we need a spark and then hopefully this will work to there. Okay, so let's ladder back up. Come to think of it now, I might be too far um, down. There we go. up come on and then this one should be blank and it's empty isn't it or emptying please be emptying i see spark moving moving so that's gonna be correct Yep. Okay. So then our challenge is I have to try to remember down there um, when we go this way, because we need to get to that pool right there. Um, this one's currently dominant, so... Hmm. I wonder. Let me think this through a little bit. Maybe this one should have been recessive? to send to that one without a spark 
augment and then I could have had a dominant one here and then used a tinker to switch it to get it into the hmm I mean, I could... Mana spreaders are pretty slow. Where do you come from? Got you. I wonder if when I was in creative mode and I, I made an extra one. Um, I'm not going to pick it up, but I think I might need to delete it because this will never despawn. It's uh, intentionally never despawn. <laughs> Um, hmm. Let's see. I may have to temporarily do spreaders. No, if I just get... Let's, instead of just staring and thinking, let's go to our testing world. Okay, um, we got some space here. full inventory of garbage. Um, I won't need you or you. I might need you or me. We'll keep the redstone just in case. I don't think I need mana spreaders, but I'll hang on to them. I do need mana pools and I have sparks but I need the augments so we need dominant and recessive um, yeah and then tinker we need the one for sparks there it is Mm -mm. Now, let's see if I can remember how we did this. If we have our mana pool, that's our input. All right. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now, if we put one at the 13 mark, it should not. Fill. But if we put one at the 12, it should. Yes. Okay, so 12 is the range. So what I want to do... Try and remember how I did this in my previous playthrough. I had uh, here was the spark tinker with a torch was a timer and mana pool was here 
this is the max range so this one wouldn't receive any and then I had that you guys remember seeing this all over my face I don't think I had those there they were probably here And then we'll put another pool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Here. The goal is to get the mana here. Okay. Now, in my previous playthrough, I had a central clock so that it was pulse sending mana in pulses all the way throughout my base in one. So, I don't think I'll be able to do that in a garden of glass. I don't want to see all the long lines of redstone. So, I'm going to need to power each one of these individually and hope that I don't put any mana other mana if I don't I need to just be conscious of where my mana pools are so I don't create any loops where things backfill and refill and yeah so the first thing that needs to happen is this one has no spark. So the first thing that needs to happen is this one needs to have a spark. Augment. It's gonna pull it in. And it won't come here. All right, and as it comes here, we're gonna need to be able to pulse it to this one which means eventually we're gonna need to switch this to we need to switch this one to dominant okay and to do that we might just um, create an input. So then what this will happen is we flick this and the augments will switch and so then it'll come into here. Now the other problem we need to do is we need to put a recessive in this one because what do you think will happen when we switch it back? mana will be coming out of here and this is a this is a backward loop that we don't want so we want a recessive here there we go so now it won't backfill it'll only go one direction And these tinker, these loops, these this setup, um, trying to figure out when this one has no spark. I'm wondering if I should do an isolated, so that it's not, if it has mana in it with it's got no spark, that it doesn't get pulled in a direction we don't want it to, like back into our generators. We always want it to go one direction. And having the augments, having these always have augments will prevent the, any other sparks in the area that don't have augments from interacting, that do have augments from interacting with these. Because augments only interact, 
augmented sparks should only interact with unaugmented sparks. Thus, that one and that one. So if our setups here always have sparks on them, we shouldn't have a backward um, flow. Isolated, I've never really used an augment for isolated, but this pretty much just means that this pool is not connected to the network. Essentially, it's a stop. Um, and all we're using it for is just to keep this pool from connecting to any pools in its range that would have only a spark on it because we only want it to go that way at that time. I think that would work. All right, so we've got that. And this way, like I said, prevents these from ever having no augment. All right, so let's duplicate this setup here. And go from there. This needs to be a repeater. Um, this, these will be, and this is the challenge, these will be hop, uh, hourglasses, and so their timing might be, it needs to be just right, so that's what I'm trying to figure out. That's why we had the line connecting them all, and I just don't think, I don't like the look of that. Um, hmm, our other option is to do... Let's do this first, but our other option is to do mana pumps. All right, so this one currently has recessive. When it has dominant, this one needs to be blank. Well, that's a, it has to be blank. I wonder if it would be intelligent design to have a pool between these two that is the one without, without a... It's always blank. Um, hmm. It would reduce the amount of these I would need. And it would only send to that when it's got the recessive, like right now. Um, when it has dominant, it would want to pull. But we could hope that these chains would be relatively full. So they... Hmm. Let's let's see. I I may end up using the mana pumps. All right, let's recount. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Here. All right. That means we need to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So this needs to be the tinker. Okay, so step one, get the mana to that pool. We 
which means flipping these, so this becomes dominant. All right, so that is dominant to fill this, right? Oh no, because this is isolated. Dang it. All right. That makes sense why, yeah. Why I've never used isolated in this setup before. All right, so that's gonna fill this pool. I'm just thinking the other way. Alright, so now that I've done that, this should go there. And in order to continue it, this one should be dominant. And it should pull from there. All right, so we have one direction there. And that's just a steady line from, let's say this is our hydrangea farm. And so far it's gotten to there without having to switch it. Now, once that's done, It moved our entire mana pool to here. This one needs to be dominant next. And in order to prevent backflow, this needs to be recessive. So then when this one switches, oh, it needs to be blank, doesn't it? There we go. Oh, you're going the wrong way though, because this is recessive. It's so that would be why I can't do this. That would be why I can't have a pool in the middle with just a spark. Okay. Because while I would like it to only go here, this one shouldn't go back up. <laughs> So that's, that's the reason why we've never had the middle ones. Okay. Um... How do I have these hooked up? All of a sudden I'm looking at that like that's way wrong. Dominant and recessive, blank and dominant. Okay. That should fill to there. Hmm.
I think in the end we could do wireless redstone for this. I think. That would make each of these a pretty bulky setup. Because I could detect. Um. I could detect when this mana pool is empty. Hey, Darkwing. And if I detected when this mana pool was empty, I could set a red send a redstone pulse to trigger the system to try to pull from that direction. Um boy. <sighs> Me and redstone. Just trying to wrap my head around it. So the other option for mana moving um fast long distance mana moving are mana pumps which we need the mana on rails so we need rail and um mana cart can you use a comparator to detect mana pool yes you can I'm just, I'm trying to think Garden of Glass world. I don't want to have big long lines of redstone. So I'm trying to figure out something where these things would just be floating in space or I'd be able to decorate them in some way. I don't know. Um, so the long lines that we did in my previous playthrough that just had redstone lines snaking out from away from the central battery or in this case generator to battery and I didn't do this one. Hi Anima. Yes, you can do Band of Mana via Corporea and just like fill up uh, mana tablets even. You fill up mana tablets and then Corporea would just request a mana tablet when the pool needed filling. So yeah. There is that option. I don't have Corporea yet, so we're trying to do something pre-Corporea. Um, so yeah. So the way this works, we're going to use that same pool. Is... We have... An in, which you can tell from the pump, this is the in. And we have an out with a mana wrap cart here. And that there, and that there. That might not be far enough away. Um, the point being, uh, if you remember this one from our playthrough too, this one is within just within range of the other car spark. And this one is not okay this one's out of range so just like this this one's in range this one's not in range I did several times anima um, I did explain my the way the the redstone lines worked with an individual hourglass so I guess this is the other way that I had mana transfer and I like I said I think we might be a little too close but we'll, we'll make it work. And this one was always dominant, and this one was always recessive. Okay, and it's currently doing stuff, but what happens is you, I would never need to spark tinker this. This would just work whenever there was mana present, and it's actually making a weird circle right now. So let's isolate this one. So pulling from the generator within range to here into the cart and the mana pump is really fast really fast look at how fast that pool's filling up all right now you could make this mine cart like fill it up and send the cart off on rails somewhere else to another pump but this system works too now this pump is this card is the pool is full 
it's still going because it's filling up the cart. And what we would do then is have another setup exactly like we had here with the individual pool. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And because that one always have a, has a recessive spark, this one doesn't need a spark augment. It'll just pull from there. All right. And then 12 blocks away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. You would have a dominant to pull it this way and then set up the same system all over again with the pumps. Right in and out. And this needs a recessive. Oop. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, let's get some isolated on here. Isolate you. We should just break you for now. And yeah, just kind of just shutting you off. So you can see how this just is just going to constantly just go without having to just tinker with the spark augments. Now you do have the problems like you were just seeing, where if there were any spark to any spark pools within range, it would get pulled into the system, and I would have to try to make sure not to get them. So they create circles and yeah because you don't want just looping mana um i'm thinking for our current challenge getting mana in from the hydrangea over to the mana battery i like this setup better it's smaller requires no redstone and no tinkering no clocks or timers so and we can make all this stuff 